Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Talk. Uh, I, I'm here by myself in this room, or at least on a microphone. I do have two uh, amazing folks, uh, Mr. Ryan Marth and Pelham Green in the room, but I'm also joined electronically over the interwaves by two other amazing people. Uh, hello to Josh Peralt. Hello. Hello, ma'am. What's hey, up? How's it going? Uh, and uh, Victoria Rogers. Hello. How are hello. you? Hello. Welcome, both of you. So, uh, why why are the two of you together on this uh, amazing tour uh, slash interview ama- extravaganza? And that is, uh, we are doing a, 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 a podcast promotion, I guess we'll call it, called Podcast of Waterdeep. Uh, and uh, well, actually, yeah. Why don't I throw it to one of you guys to say it instead of instead of me, uh, Victoria? What is what is this all about? Well, this is to celebrate the new module that's coming out. And it's a little bit of a riff of what Stream of Many Eyes was going on. and But only this is podcasting. Uh, so we've got 10 episodes. It's going to be a lot of fun of an ongoing continuous story set in Waterdeep using some of the NPCs and loca- locations found in the new module. Um, kind of give you a hint of what you can do with lower level characters sneaking around. Yeah, and uh, you brought in a whole bunch of awesome guests from the audio live play community. We did. Too too many guests? Were there too many? No. No. (laughs) Can you you have too many? There was a lot. That's all I... I, Yeah, there is a lot. (laughs) So who who, who are some of the fun people you you, you got to work with on this? Well, we have... uh, uh, Let me bring up the list because there is a lot and I will forget them if I don't have my list up here. Uh, So we've got as guests, we have Matt Young from Hello from the Magic Tavern, Kelly Lynn D'Angelo from Girls Got Some Glory, Chris Perkins joined us, uh, Holly Conrad, James D'Amato, Adam Carnavalli, Scott Kurtz, Andrew Young, Anna Becerra, Carlos Luna, Satine Phoenix, Rudy Rutenberg, Kyle Vogt, Ross Rockefeller, Ivan Van Norman, Valanda, Kyle, Christina, Ariel, Maz, TJ Storm, Matthew Lillard, and Adel Rafai. What? Yeah. That is like a lot of guests. That's a pretty star studded uh, uh, list. Uh, in addition to uh, the the major uh, you know podcast groups uh, that are involved, so uh, you know uh, let me throw it to Josh here for a second. You actually took the initiative uh, last yeah. year around this time for uh, an idea similar to this for podcast of annihilation. Yes, yes, uh, that was yeah, about one year ago. We did the first podcast of event after I pitched it over your way, and you're like, yeah, that sounds good. Pretty and much, just kind of ran with it. Uh, and then uh, Victoria did a uh, podcast of Foes. And now mm-hmm. we are working together for this one and co-planned and co-wrote it. Yeah. Cool stuff. And so, yeah. uh, Josh, you're com- you were coming from the Taking Initiative uh, podcast. Yes. Yes. We, uh, we are uh, one of the podcasts that don't do the homebrew material, but we do the modules, but concentrate on the homebrew classes. That way we can go about it in a slightly different way than just the just doing the book. Uh, right now we're doing Curse of Strahd. Sweet. And, uh, it's a fun time. <laughs> Slash awful for everyone involved. <laughs> it is. We're actually done recording, uh, but our last episode comes out, I think, in December or January. So oh, wow. we're kind of taking our break now and about to jump into Storm King's Thunder in a couple of weeks. Are you basically doing all of the, the, the D&D adventures that have come out in order or just uh, well, we, as we it comes? Well, we first and first, mm. uh, and that took us about two years to go through because we do a biweekly release. Ah. Um, and since we're doing the podcast of events along the way, that's our way to kind of dabble into the modules as they come out. Uh, but Bucky really wanted to run Storm King's Thunder, and that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to be passing over the DM screen his way. Oh, cool. And I'll get clear this time around. Nice. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and Victoria, you run a podcast called Broadswords. Yeah, it's one of the broadswords. We're an all-woman D&D actual play podcast. Uh, we do more a homebrew story, um, but it is set in, well, currently it's set in Rashomon, which is in the northeastern area of Faerun. Mm. Yeah. I'm not familiar with Rashomon. What's what's going on in Rashomon? What- uh, Rashomon is a matriarchy ruled by witches. Ah. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, well, uh, Minx and Boo, uh, people are probably pretty familiar with those two characters are from Rashomon. Uh, so it's just, it's a fun kind of out of the way place that has a lot of like really cool spirits and ghosts and 
things that I thought would be fun to bring in as a story. That is really, really cool. Um, and so, yeah, what was the, the inspiration to uh, create what's going on here for, for Podcasts of Waterdeep? Where did that all uh, stem from? Uh, like for the event itself? Well, the stream of many eyes, as soon as it was done, I know Victoria and I both reached out because we we're like, we want to we want to continue this podcast of thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, while we were chatting with uh, you and Pelham, I believe, was on that call as well. You You pitched that. Why don't we just write it in a similar way? And we uh, went at it of like, okay, let's let's pick a story. Let's try to go off of where Stream Mini Eyes left off, and go in a different direction, but tie in all the episodes, which was um, a fun, interesting way to write a story since all the groups are very different and recording out of order. So. Mm -hmm we need to figure out like how are we going to intertwine all these different stories and characters together. So Victoria and I thankfully got to talk to uh, Ivan Van Norman who co-wrote the stream many eyes and he gave us some pointers, uh, some tips of how he went about doing the off the table stuff um, for that stream. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we just kind of dove into a, uh, a couple of plot points we really wanted to hit. And uh, we got everybody else on board with it. And putting all those DMs in the same Discord channel was a mm -hmm. gorgeous thing to watch. It was a lot everyone, of fun. Everyone's like, hey, what about this idea? And then one of the DMs was like, oh, cool. If I take that idea and throw it into mine, can you work with that idea for me? And it just became a, a community of just gorgeous DMing and idea throwing around. And uh, it, it was a wonderful thing to watch. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so v v you you enjoyed that Discord, Victoria? Well, yeah. Oh, I totally did. It, it it was it was a lot of fun, as Josh said, and just seeing people working together. And then people would say, "Okay, well, I'm going to do this in in my episode," and someone says, "Oh, well, that's a cool idea. I'm going to try to incorporate it or maybe introduce that as a location in my episode too, um, just so that we have continuity, but also just like." a lot of callbacks and a lot of, a lot of fun. And people are very aware of that. And it, it just, that, that sense of collaboration was I've, it was, it was really great because normally when you're a DM, it's a very solo thing. Mm -hmm. You're, you're creating this on your own and you can't tell anyone because then it ruins the story. <laughs> but with this, you're able to, to DM with a group of people and it, being able to share that what is was a new experience as a dm yeah the way you guys are talking about it and and i mean uh josh you have you have experience working in tv but it almost sounds like a like a writer's room right yeah. like, that, that yes uh mm -hmm. like i don't i don't get to work on that side of things uh as much but i do get to hear all those discussions uh for people who don't know i work in post-production uh i'm an online editor for tv and film so like i work on blue bloods or the purge a tv series that's coming out soon so all these like serial things where you get to hear like how these episodes are written and created and that influences my dming uh for taking initiative as well i tend to talk to my players off to the side and try to like work in their points or what they want to happen but you know held secret from everybody else at the table yeah so i try to plan it and uh run it uh, if anyone heard an episode that i've dm before i tend to structure it as like the camera moves or the pan uh there's a pan that happens where you zoom out i, I treat it like a tv show or, or a movie so working on this felt exactly like that mm. you had your beginning section you throw in your hook you build up towards the conflict and then you you know you have your resolution at the end it was one solid story yeah and as much as podcast of annihilation was great for exploring the different locations we had a little bit of intertwined kind of uh working togetherness that was going on uh which is one of the reasons i wanted to start the thing was for the community building and then podcast of photos we had a lot of groups that mm -hmm. got to explore all these different types of monsters and encounters uh, and you got to see everyone's different style of play. And we got to hone in both of those concepts together and make something a little bit more cohesive and uh, having everybody definitely working together in every episode and across episodes, which yeah. is even better. Yeah. And so, yeah, Victoria, it almost sounds like you guys were taking like, you know, uh, by having to record the episodes out of order, you had to have a really uh, a clear sense of what the building blocks of the story were. Yeah. 
Uh, and and that's what what Josh and I did is we we went through what each episode would be like with just like basic plot points that we suggested should be hit just so that we have something continuous. Mm-hmm. And then we we presented those to all of the DMs. They chose which episode they wanted to do, and then we all then worked together with the details. That's so cool. And then I mean, you, uh, most of them are recorded now at this point, right? Yeah, I think they're all done uh yeah. most of them are even all edited that's uh, so cool. i can't wait it, to listen some of them were pretty massive i think i finished mine at like 20 hours i think ram finished his as 25 like we just dug in and made this probably one of the better episodes we've tried to pump out before wait 25 yeah. hours 25 hours of editing oh of editing whoa yeah, really? yeah per episode <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I edited two episodes and I, I put mm-hmm. about 20 hours each into them. Holy moly. Was, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's 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 getting it down to, to a fine point for sure. Now, when you guys do edited stuff, uh, you know, uh, a lot of what we do here on 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 the D and D Twitch channel is very off the cuff. It's very much like we you know we'll, we you know uh, Perkins can plan out what's going to happen over the episode, but it doesn't necessarily impact other groups, and so he doesn't you know he can just kind of change what 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 happens for that. But for for this, it had to you know it had to have kind of a beginning and a middle and an end for each episode. Uh, was that what was the most difficult part of editing, or was that just more of a uh, let's get to the to the core parts of these that were the most entertaining? Yeah, I, I think it's about we we also had a time limit for time limit for every episode. We wanted to hit around the two hour mark, and and so with with dice rolls and maybe some rule looking upping um, and <laughs> those sorts of things that that takes time. So so right. those are the things that you like edit and you cut out, and then you need to score it and you need to add sound effects and you 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 know you need to do noise reduction and you're bringing in guests who aren't necessarily podcasters hmm. so do they have the equipment uh that that a podcaster would normally have so you you know you know, got to work on their audio a bit you know bring it up uh but it, it all in all like it, i mean it's just a labor of love and you do it because it's fun and you want to yeah. give a good product out to everyone that's cool yeah so uh both of you have been you know within the live play community for for a while uh with josh we talked to you last year and got to hear a lot of your background uh but uh victoria this is our first time speaking to you here on dragon talk so what uh w- when did you start playing D? oh i was young um i well i started playing tabletop games when i was about nine or ten Whoa, um but that really? was with hero quest which was like a D light board yeah. game um that they don't make anymore um my mom was the gm and then from there when i was about 12 my dad told me that a friend of his from work had a bbs bulletin board <laughs> service yeah <laughs> pre-internet um and they played D on there and oh no way would you like to play so that was my first experience when i was 12 playing on a bbs and then from there, I, I moved to chat rooms because the internet arrived. Um, so I played in chat because I didn't know anyone in person to play. And it wasn't until high school mm. uh, that I you know, was able to meet other people and then start playing. And then I've just been playing since. That's great. What was it about that uh, experience with your mom as GM that you, th- I mean, w- 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 was, was that the galvanizing thing where you're like, oh my gosh, I want to do this. And then you were finding opportunities later on. Well, I've always been drawn to fantasy, mm. like as a little kid, like my Shira was like my favorite cartoon. Yeah. You got a chick who's strong with a sword running around on a flying Pegasus unicorn. I mean, what, what could be better? Um, and then those were all the stories that I gravitated towards. Mm-hmm. And then with my mom GMing and you get to like role play and it's like, I love playing make believe as a kid. And I get to continue to do it as an adult, um, <laughs> but with structure and rules. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so I think it was just a continuation of my love for make believe and fantasy. What what kind of fantasy did you, uh, other than Shira, did you dig? Uh, well, like books, I was really my favorite book was The Hero and the Crown um, and The Blue Sword by Robin McKinley. A lot of like just young adult books that were had strong female characters who were the ones rescuing people Mm. and slaying the dragons. Those are the ones that I gravitated towards the most. Yeah. 
those uh, I mean there's there's there was a couple of those uh you know from uh that era or you know the early 80s and stuff that that spoke mm-hmm. to me as well and that I always go back to that as being like that's why I was from that weird cartoon flight of the dragons that I liked yeah. you know watching it now I'm like oh why did I it's not that not that good but no. it, it would transport me very much to the world so yeah I'm always I'm always interested to find out what what other windows did other people find to get them into into fantasy yeah it's cool uh and then yeah and then when you're when you're talking about how to explain D and D to people I always go back to that it's it's like playing pretend but with you know structure a framework yeah. around it <laughs> it that's basically it yeah collaborative storytelling uh is you know, you have a scenario with a group of people, you're presented with that scenario, you're given a group of skills, and now you got to solve it. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, uh, two daughters now. Uh, there's, there's seven and five. And uh, that's basically what they do. They, they come up with scenarios of, of, of what their toys are doing and playing with each other. And I'm like, you're just basically playing D&D. And then they fight over who gets to be the DM, essentially. <laughs> They're like, yeah. no, I don't want to do what you want to do. I want to do what I want to do. And you're like, all right, well, who, someone you know, take turns being the dungeon master. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing a similar thing with my kid of uh, every night... Uh, whenever I, I have visitation with them, I get to do like three stories and it's either you pick three books or you can replace one of those books for a story that we will tell together Ooh. And I get to tell him kid friendly versions of the different games that I have run or been a part of <laughs> I ask him for like his input. So for one of them, I ended up telling the story of when I ran Celeste and Brittany from the venture maidens uh, in an in game in universe D and D game about unicorns. And he had a blast with it. And he would just start, you know, introducing like, oh, unicorns and dragons and giants. So he's doing the building blocks of that storytelling process. And I can't wait till it expands further. And he loves drawing on the grid maps and making traps. And just it's it's cool to watch your kids starting to go through that creativity phase. It totally is. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I say phase like it stops. <laughs> we're all we're all living in that phase. <laughs> yes. I think as humans, we basically want to live in that phase for as long as we can. And, uh, you yeah, know, that's what D&D lets us do, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you mentioned uh, Venture Maidens. Uh, they are another one of the groups who are participating in podcasts of Waterdeep. They sure yeah. are. Uh, who are, uh, I, I, I love Celeste and everything that they, they do there. What are, what are some other groups that uh, uh, are, are, are gracing the episodes? We have, uh, in order, if I'm remembering correctly, we have North by North Quest. We have Dragon Friends. Then it's Taking Initiative, The Broadswords, Venture Maidens, Dungeon Drunks, uh, You Meet in a Tavern, and then Drunks and Dragons. And then episode nine will be DM'd by uh, Lisa Chen, or Merciful DM. And then episode 10 is DM'd by Aram Vartian of God's Fall. Very cool. Yeah, that's, a, I, again, another star, uh, uh, you know, uh, studded lineup of uh, podcasts out there. A lot of them were folks uh, that have been involved in the previous podcast of, uh, but uh, what can you tell me about North by North Quest? North by North Quest are a group based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and they, they record all at the table. And what they do is actually a little different from a lot of other uh, D&D podcasts is they do collaborative storytelling. Mm. So they, they rotate DMs uh, throughout it. And they also kind of come up with a storyline ahead of time together as a group. Oh, cool. um, and then someone is the DM. So the, the DM still has a lot of agency in what they choose, but the overall arcing story uh, they do do together ahead of time, but they're not exactly sure exactly how that story is going to manifest because it depends on, on what the DM does. But yeah, there there's uh David and Tiffany and uh, they, they're, I think David just finished DMing and Tiffany's going to be taking over. Cool. Uh, in the next season. Yeah. Awesome. So we got to meet them at uh, Gen Con. Yeah, we uh, did. Along with the Venture Maidens and you meet in a tavern and you yeah. got to meet, uh, I think, almost half of the groups uh, when we were there and all yeah. for the first time. Sweet. That's yeah. that's what uh, gaming conventions can be all about is uh, uh, people getting together who have only conversed online or, or you know, by post back in the day. <laughs> they would come yeah. up and, you know, be like, <laughs> hey, let's actually 
get together and see each other face to face. So that's that's cool that Gen Con can still kind of be that hub. Uh, what was it like? How, how, what you know? With, you, I think you mentioned before we started recording, Josh. That was your first time there. It was my first time there. Uh, John uh, or Bucky and I did a uh, little bit of a road trip from New York City to Indianapolis, and. Uh, it was a nice 12, 14 hour drive or so. Did you go on Route uh, 80 there on uh, in Pennsylvania? Uh, yeah, we were in Pennsylvania for quite some time. It, that's what all I remember about that road trip out. Anytime you leave New York City, yeah. it's just like, gosh, we're in Pennsylvania for like five, 10 hours. Yep. And, and then that, John and I were like going through like, there's just so much corn. There's so much corn <laughs> everywhere and nothing. Uh, but we got there and. Uh, Honestly, everyone was exactly how it, we expected them to be. And it was probably, and I'm not even going to say probably, it was one of the best weekends and experiences I've gotten to have. And we all left and immediately just missed each other in the event. It was Aww. a wonderful time. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Victoria? I, it was my first Gen Con experience as well. Uh, and actually, I, I was roommates. I shared a hotel room with the North by Northwest with David and Tiffany. No way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was the first time we met. But we were like, yeah, hey, let's share a hotel room. OK. Uh, so we did. And but in, I met Josh for like mm -hmm. in person for the first time. I mean, leading up to Gen Con, Josh and I had been like FaceTiming and like chatting constantly. Every day, um, every morning, every night. <laughs> <laughs> he was like the first person I spoke to in the morning and the last person I spoke to at night leading up to this. But um, it, it's, yeah, no, it was so much fun. And like, I, um, it was strange. I was in, for me, I was just excited because I was invited to uh, be on panels with people that I really respect. And I did a live show with hello from the magic tavern. And it was just one fun thing after another and meeting people. So I had cool. a blast. Nice. That did was you, a fun show. That did you guys really play good. a lot of D&D? I didn't play any. I played one game of Mask. <laughs> that was it. That I, sounds I, very I, similar. I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I played one game nice. of D&D. Yeah. That is exactly my experience from going to Gen Con. Uh, I, I haven't been in many, many years. Uh, but when I was on the press side, I would go and I'd be like, I'm going to play this and I'm going to play that and da 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 da. And no, you, you're basically running from appointment to appointment or meeting to meeting or, or making sure that you're, uh, uh, you know, seeing all the collaborators you want to meet with. Like it's, yeah, four days of gaming for some people, but for others, it's just <laughs> being able to meet. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was definitely a meet and greet and have fun and enjoy other people's company kind of weekend. But it was a blast. Definitely going to go again. Very yeah. cool. The, the one game I got to do, it was DM'd by uh, Lauren Peterson, who's a DM for another podcast in our network, uh, Nerds on a Roll. And he was running some sessions of masks. And we just wanted to get to play with somebody that's been across the country. We haven't gotten to meet the entire time. Nice. Um, and it, it was fun. And we just did that just to be with him. And the rest of the time was like, cool, let's hang out. Let's have drinks and let's stay out till 430 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I went to bed at a reasonable hour. Thank I certainly did not. <laughs> Thank you for being the adult. Uh, uh, but I, 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 I would have been I would have been there with you being like, all right, it's 1130. I'm going to. Good night. Yeah. I'm and then I probably would. We all said midnight was it. That was it. We were going home, and midnight was not it. We just went to another bar. <laughs> that was it. There was imagination to be discussed. Oh, yeah. Exactly. At, at one point, like, so Joe from You Meet in a Tavern and I are working uh, in the same location uh, for a podcast of Waterdeep. So we had to create it together. Mm. And beforehand, Joe was like, well, we'll just tell our players to go off to the side. They'll hang out. We'll grab a drink, and we'll we'll talk. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then we were there. Both of us were like pretty into the drinks. And he was like, want to talk about that? I'm like, no, dude, no, we're not doing that right now. Dudes can't. If you tell me stuff and I tell you it is going to be gone. So we just ended up hanging out and just referenced the fact that we'll just talk later. <laughs> you, had, you needed that frame of reference. You needed to be able to have that, that uh, relationship building time before you could get to the, to the real collaboration later on, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's crazy. It's a great time, man. That's cool. And it was it, it was uh, fortuitous that Gen Con kind of came at the moment where a lot of the episodes for Podcast of Waterdeep were being recorded. So yes, uh, yeah. I think some of them were actually recorded at in Indianapolis. Is that right? Um, I sure don't think that. so. I think I think we all said after Gen Con, 
because this weekend is crazy. Mm. Uh, but we ended up meeting some of the other players. Like I got to meet Matt Lillard before our game because we did the finale together. So right. I got to meet him beforehand um, and just meeting the other groups in general. Uh, but I don't think we actually recorded any. Uh, okay. That may have happened for POA, but I'm not sure about this one. Got it. No, I don't think so. I think they were all recorded afterwards. Um, but w- there was a lot of talk about it and there was a lot of discussion. And- right. So it ended up being a, a, a vital collaboration tool, even if none of the, uh, the recording was done. They're probably better not to have to record w- away from your home, you know, office yes. with your microphones and everything like that. Yeah. It was, de- we'll call it a team building exercise. <laughs> I agree with said statement. Yes. <laughs> I subscribe to that newsletter. Uh, so, yeah, what was it like uh, meeting Matthew Lillard and seeing what uh, his uh, Beetle and Grimm company is all about? It was cool, man. Uh, so I-, I definitely wanted to hit up a couple of people I knew who were going to be there, and I didn't get to catch a lot of them, but I did get to catch Matt because he posted his booth number online. Mm. Um, so I went over. Um, I- I've been a fan of Matt's since, oh, I don't know, like, hackers like back in the day serial so, killer uh, yeah so i i knew all of his you know stuff and going out to him meeting him and just because of the nature of my job the whole starstruck thing is just it has to be out the window right so it was one of those like i'm really impressed with your work i'm glad we're going to work together i just want to meet you in person and just say hey after all the emails and i can't wait to uh you know get together and roll dice and stuff and he was one of the kindest most down-to-earth people to talk to there was no you know weirdness or anything he was just like i'm here and this is my company and i'm really proud of it uh and he he showed me some of the stuff that was around the booth and um, a lot of people were very happy and excited to see all the products that were there Mm. Uh, there was gorgeous artwork on that man like uh all the different kind of props that you'd get for the different box sets is just very well made they are good oh yeah Yeah. you got to see if you actually hold them huh uh, I did not get to hold them because I was just going around. I was oh. like, Ooh, pretty. <laughs> yeah, but other people were definitely around and like, you know, you know, manipulating and checking them out. And uh, there's a lot of people asking a lot of very good questions for him. And Matt was just super excited to talk to everybody about it. That's cool. I'm glad he uh, uh, was uh, game for joining your the, the this whole thing. Like he's like, I just want to play more and get the word out there. So that that's really cool, and I, I love what they're doing. And hopefully, what you guys are doing are an inspiration to folks who are getting that platinum edition to 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 you know uh, create stories collaboratively like like you guys are doing. I yeah. hope so. And yeah. this module specifically is it lends itself to so many different styles of gameplay. Right which we did on on purpose for this episode. You have your dungeon and crawl episodes, but you also have your episodes with little to no uh, initiative roles at all. It's just purely role playing. It's yeah. for the intrigue portion. It's for heists. It's for, you know, the politics. You can go in really any direction you want to. Mm-hmm. It's just a big city and so much to do that you can go, I want to go in this direction. And then your players will obviously go in the other direction. You have to follow them. Uh, but yeah. it, it lends what do you guys think? I mean, you know, Victoria, I'll throw this to you more. Like, you know, uh, I was introducing some new people to D and D a couple weekends ago, and one of them had played, you know, O D and D back in the day, and he was struck by uh, how the like character flaws and bonds and things are like on the you know front and center on the 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 character sheet. And mm-hmm. he was like, oh, we didn't do that before. We just rolled up stats and we ran in and we, you know, hit each other with sticks, essentially. Mm-hmm. And he's like, this is so much different, but I love it so much more. And do you feel like that lends itself more to the the type of content that's this audio play type of, of, of content? Yes, very much so. Um, like the broadswords, like I, I've been playing D&D for years, like over 25 years. Um <laughs> But um, like the other broads, they had never played before. Um, so before we, I taught them how to play and I, they really jumped right into it because it was character and story focused. And when I ran them through our episode for, for Podcasts of Waterdeep uh, with Chris Perkins, which is a lot of fun to nice. have the DM for Chris Perkins. Uh, but um, he's really good at looking up rules for you, so you don't have to do it yourself. He's like the best player ever for that reason. <laughs> yeah, he is. And then he would set things up for me, and I'd be like, oh, thanks. <laughs> um, but uh, it 
it just lends itself to role playing and it, it lends itself for, for collaborative storytelling and being a DM and allowing and like have having that leeway for your players to, to add their own stuff. Mm. Um, it, it's not just you narrating. It's you presenting that saying, okay, so what do you do? And really letting them narrate and, and give um, their part of the story. And you just kind of guide what they do so that it just doesn't become a random tangent um, and it makes it cohesive. And it, I think that the, poc- the, the new module really lends itself to that because you can, like Josh was saying earlier, you, there's so much to offer within there. Um, there it's not just, okay, let's XP and grind. This right. is more lends itself to milestones and to story. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys have actually had your hands on the adventure for a couple of weeks now. So you yeah. had a, a chance to kind of digest it and, and, and see how you would run it. And, and I, I agree with you. It does feel way more like a uh, sandbox. Like here, here is, here is, here's your city to play in and here's all the hooks and things that you can use if you so choose, but there's also like, just use those as examples for the story that you may want to tell within Waterdeep. Mm-hmm. Cause there are so many really cool locations in Waterdeep that, that it talks about. Um, and a lot of really fun things that, that really maybe aren't there in the actual story, but they are mentioned. Mm-hmm. And I really grabbed onto one for our episode. I won't get into it too much because I don't want to spoil it, but uh, there was something it's not really there in the adventure, but it's in the book. And like I, the, the second I read it, I went, yes, this is it. This is what we're doing. Uh, I, I need to have an adventure set here. Uh, so th- there's a lot of inspiration in there. Yeah, you knew exactly which episode you were going to run like immediately and where it was and what you were doing. You're like, this, oh, yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah. Uh, that was one thing also when we were initially pitching everything, Victoria was uh, uh, putting out the idea of each episode or some episodes should feature different wards of Waterdeep. We should explore right. the city as a whole. We have enough episodes that we can go in and start seeing uh, like a different you know, section like what are they doing by the docks or what are they doing where everyone is really rich? What about like, you know, uh, you know, a random theater or something like it's, there's so much in Waterdeep that you have your, you know, pick and each podcast tends to run their episodes you know, a bit differently. I've been listening back to the episodes just to QC them and everybody has a very unique style. All the players are, you know, they're focused in different directions. Like uh, Victoria's episode is immensely role playing based and try and as Victoria said, like having them do the narration. Uh, mine, I went a very experimental way, and all the people that are there, they're not in one cohesive party. There's like three or four different sections of them and how they are going to work together or against each other. Uh, you can have very different styles, but still be able to play in this module all the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 fun to jump in and stick your toes and 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 choose where you and your players want to explore. Uh, it's it's, yeah. and I love also that it's a complete contrast to uh, uh, Tomb of Annihilation and and the Curse of Strahd and Storm King Thunder and where we've been before. You know, this is very micro scale as opposed to macro of of worlds ending and and uh, uh, liches colliding. It's it's very much a uh what happens on the the granular level in, in a fantasy world uh i dig it yeah and it's cool how you can take all those little uh battles like it's not world ending but to your players it could feel that way right and you it just depends on the scope that you put on it and the amount of importance that they think it's worth like i almost can, like uh if you want to compare it to uh like like marvel cinematic universe properties where like the avengers are like the bigger world ending folks where uh what's happening in Waterdeep Dragon Heist is very much the defenders it's very much like the Luke mm-hmm. Cage's and the and the Jessica Jones's dealing at the at, at, at a much smaller level that feels very important and is could almost have more drama uh to it than these larger than life conflicts that the uh, uh the bigger named heroes have to deal with yeah we did compare this to Avengers quite a bit actually yeah yeah uh, mostly because uh, we took some characters that exist in all these other podcasts and put them all together. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
like Matt plays a very familiar character. Uh, Dungeon Drunks, I believe, pulled in their original team. I have some people from my game. I know Victoria has some of the broads. Like we, we definitely pulled them in. And also, I ran a uh, a quick one shot that we released about a week ago that continued on with the characters of Adam and Joel from D and for Nerds and Nick from Taking Initiative, the two Tabaxis and the Gnome Barbarian, doing a little bit more in Tomb of Annihilation, which mm. led into this event. So we were trying to make this the accumulated, um, all the people you know getting together in the same room and um, hopefully no one snaps their fingers. <laughs> Should have gone for the head, man. <laughs> Should have gone for the head. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, well, Victoria, this is something I, I, I've been thinking about a lot when I'm running my own games, uh, and it's shifted over the last 10 years where I used to you know, be in the weeds uh, when running a game uh, when it came to, you know, coming up with random NPCs that I needed to kind of generate on the fly uh, and be like, oh, man, I just can't wait for us to roll initiative uh, so that I can just get to something that's a little bit more easier to to, to, to get to. Uh, but I feel like now in my style, I'm almost more the opposite. I'm like, oh, crap, we have to roll initiative uh, yeah. and fight a battle. Uh, do, do you feel that? Like, or, or... Oh, I totally feel that. I am on page with that. I, I'm like, combat? Yeah, combat's great. Like, don't get me wrong. Combat is fun. Uh, but I, I, prefer, I prefer skill challenges. Mm. I prefer role playing. I, I prefer people coming up with creative solutions to, to situations. Uh, I mean, combat can be fun, but, you know, it's sometimes... Sometimes it can drag on a little bit, especially if you do have newer players and they're not quite sure, you know, exactly how their their characters work or, you know, it's the first time they're playing a, a caster and they've, they're a wizard and they've got like seven pages of spells that they're, you know, trying to figure out. Um, with, and it's great and it's fun. And I, I you know, you got to have some combat in there because you, you need some some risk. Um, but But you can have risk in other ways, too. And those risks can be just as important to the story um, as combat. Yeah. Uh, is it harder? Is it harder to edit uh, the audio for a combat scene than it is for a role playing scene? Yeah, it is. Um, it takes three times as long wow. to edit uh, a combat just because of the dice rolls and because of people reading things and looking at things. Um, and, and also just pacing, because when when someone's listening to a podcast, if if they're just really listening to you saying, OK, um, well, uh, I'm going to roll with my bow. OK, roll. OK, um, OK. Oh, what's my modifier? And then it just <laughs> you don't want to listen to that. No one wants to listen to that. Um, so you end up cutting all of that out just so you can keep it going. You keep that flow and also just gives it that more cinematic feel of yeah. that that risk and that excitement and that this is happening quickly. Because re let's remember, each round is only six seconds. So let's you, you want to keep that going when you're doing a podcast because it is it is a game, but it's a game for entertainment. Yeah. So it's a little different than when you're at the table. Ways I've, I've seen to and used to enhance it is throwing music in. Uh, that tends to keep it going. Yeah. Um, also, when I'm DMing, there was a moment in Curse of Straw that there was a time limit. So I was uh, my, you know, I was just talking and going, okay, you're doing cool. You can't figure out what to do. Cool. Your turn is skipped. Go and just keep on, you know, making everyone go. And you can do like a three hour combat, but it'll turn into a one hour episode by the time you're done cutting it down. Yeah. So we've tried to stick with more of the role playing as well for that reason. It's a story. And then every so often you're like, this is our combat episode. <laughs> After the combat, we're going to go on to more role playing stuff. But here's your combat for the people who are craving it. And the fact that we just need it. Uh, you need to run things a little differently in podcasts. It's, yeah. it's not just for you at that point. Do you have to train your players a little bit so that, you know, so to, to what you were talking about, Victoria, of like the, well, I'm going to roll with my bow. And you're like, that's, that's not really... <laughs> what's happening you're 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 trying to shoot your bow not really like so yeah. do you ever have to like can you just say that again and tell me what you're doing in a in an editable format yeah um because they were new players they didn't have those habits already mm. uh so so that was easier for me um 
to get them to do because they didn't know any different. Right. Ooh, uh, that's that's like that's a, a perfect reason to get all new players into your podcast, isn't it? Yeah, it was it was it was quite nice because I and it's made them better players just when they're not in front of a microphone mm -hmm. because they, they add a lot of more flair and a lot more story to to the games that they participate in now. Um, but when I do bring in guests, because we we do bring in guests, um, sometimes I'll ask them to repeat things. Um, sometimes there is a little bit of direction, not, not a direction of, I want you to do this, but do what you did, but give me more description, more narration, um, describe what your character is doing. And I, I ask a lot of leading questions. Hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll say a lot of things like, well, what does it look like when you do that? And do you, how are you feeling about that? Do you keep like those, do you edit those out? typically or do you keep those leading questions in there uh sometimes i edit them out sometimes i leave them in hmm. uh, it depends on the situation um i i think too because in, in our podcast so one of the things that we do is because they're they're new players we do keep some of the rule stuff in um just because that's that's just our angle as we want the new people uh new players to D D to be able to listen to our podcast and learn from it Right. So, so we, we keep some of that stuff in, not all of it because it, then it would just drag on, but we do keep enough in so that there's enough, um, I guess a little bit of teaching. Yeah. I mean, and that has been uh, a huge part of why I think, uh, we're seeing a surge in, in Dungeons and Dragons popularity is because people can listen to it or watch it and can uh, grok the idea of what it is to play in a game so much easier than merely reading a book, right? You're, you're, yeah. you're able to kind of get that into your, into your brain in a way that, uh, you know, even the old school OD and D manual, uh, I think it was in the dungeon master's guide. It had a, like a script that showed like, Oh, this is what a typical D and D game is like. And that was, illustrative back when I was a kid, but it still was not the same as what it's like when you're actually at the table. No, it's not the same. No. And it's, I, I, podcasts have like reinvigorated my love for D and D. Mm. I know that much. Um, and I know if it wasn't for, for some podcasts, some of my players wouldn't be even be pl interested in playing D and D. That's a good point. Yeah. Now you guys, are pretty firmly in the audio uh, uh, creation mode. Uh, what What are your thoughts on that versus the video? How How do you think about what you're doing differently? Josh, I'll throw it to you. <laughs> oh, okay. I was I was gonna uh, let Victoria answer. Um, so for me, I tend to stick with audio for uh, a couple different reasons. One. I can actually do audio while I do other work. If there's video going on, I know that I can't really do that. Um, so there's very few video things I tend to watch. Critical Role being definitely one of them. And Critical Role being one of the main driving forces of why our podcast even exists. Mm. Uh, just getting to watch them you know, go through 5e, it helped us learn the rules uh, because we played 4e and 3.5. Uh, but 5e Critical Role was kind of my introduction to that. Um, it, when you watch a table as like critical role, that is just like, uh, they are actors. They tell that story. They're able to dive in and it never really, at least to me, it doesn't feel like it's slogs at all. It's just, they're always doing something that's it's important to the characters or it's important to the story at all times. Um, the inability to edit, uh, makes me a little bit nervous at times, especially if I'm on stream, because sometimes, you know, in a game, you'll say something and be like, oh, that shouldn't have been said, <laughs> that should have been cut, or I meant it in a very different way from what I said, and maybe we should change it. Uh, you can't do those retakes. Um, podcasts, you, you have that creative force of like, here's the music I want to add now, especially in retrospect going, oh, if I connect these two scenes together this way, or maybe if I A mm. and B the session from two different angles and then combine it in a different way. Uh, in our episode, I ended up narrating something and intercutting it back into the episode. You can't really do that kind of thing when you're doing it live. So you have two very, very different styles of play. And the live stuff is very good for an audience who especially wants to learn how to play, see how the game is run, especially for themselves. Uh, because the podcast, it 
can kind of lie a little bit of it. You don't know that it took three minutes to look up a rule in the middle of it. Cause you're not going to put that in. Um, they, they have very different styles to it. And um, the, especially me as an editor, uh, I like to I like to edit stuff. I want them to be kind of little audio dramas. Um, that's that's kind of how I handle it. What do you think, Victoria? Victoria? Uh, they're they're two very different things. Like like Josh said, um, I, I think a podcast is like an audio drama. It's like going back in time to when everyone sat around their radios and listened to a story. Uh, that's what a podcast format is. Uh, live is like you said, it, you. You just go um, and you need to be on the ball constantly. It, mm. It's a different game. We've started to do a little bit of live streaming ourselves, the broadswords. Um, we're just kind of starting to dip our toes in it. We're learning. Uh, there are certain things that you, there's a whole different technique <laughs> for streaming. But at the same time, I think that's what a lot of people like about streams is mm. because they're honest and because they're open and you can see a bunch of friends just really sitting around having a good time and then you get to join them and it's like you're hanging out with other people so it's two very different experiences uh two different techniques from a, a producer standpoint and from a player or dm's uh standpoint but I, I enjoy them both for, for different reasons. I do have to say one thing that I do love about live streaming is I don't have to edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit easier that way. Right? You don't have 20 yeah. hours of work waiting for you when you're done. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I hadn't really even connected this analogy in my head until I was listening to you guys answer that question. But it is a little bit like how I, I could be a fan of a band and like their studio albums and really appreciate the care and craft that went into mastering that studio album. But there's just something really great about going to a live show and seeing the, the, the mess ups and the, you know, the, the audience reactions and feeling that. And that's, you know, kind of what you get out of the, the streaming versus what a, a crafted audio podcast experience is. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that live interaction with the people that are on the stream sometimes too. Yeah. Like you can't do that with podcasts. You can talk about it afterwards, but the ability to be in chat, like just like we have people in chat now and go, I agree with this thing going on. <laughs> uh, be in that audience with everyone and go, Hey, that was pretty cool. Wasn't it? You know, or like, I don't think that rule was right. You can't really do that with podcasts unless you talk about it afterwards, like you would with a TV show or a movie that live stream, you get that audience there uh, as you would with a live show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Remember like the, uh, the critical role season one finale, like the, you were, I think in the chat with us too, there's 30 something thousand people watching that finale happen. When, when, when that the was hand crazy. was, was taken, it was very, yeah. uh, viscerally like, Whoa, you would not be able to see that. Uh, that, that moment would not have the power if it was not, that just happened. Yes. You know, even if it was an edited thing, it would you know, probably would have been more dramatic music and like, well, all this stuff that would happen. But there was just something seeing the reactions from the other players uh, when that occurred. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was that shared experience. Um, and that shared experience is something that live streaming has that that podcasts don't. Right. Uh, but I, I love what podcasts do. I love the the idea. I mean, you guys have mentioned how going back to a radio play where uh, I was a huge fan when I was a kid of of listening to the Lord of the Rings uh, uh, audio play that was I think created by the BBC uh, as well as uh, they're all British. Uh, the the Hitchhiker's Guide yeah the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, uh, as well as uh, I think we might have lost video. Uh oh, it just all of a sudden closed down. Um. Well, I'm going to keep talking uh, real quick because uh, I, I really enjoyed all those as, a, as an audio format. And I think there's there's uh, uh, they're, they're, they're equally interesting in both uh, for for those reasons. And it feels like you come to uh, I don't know. I just love the fact that 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 the D and D live play uh, stuff. And I, I, I don't know how better to categorize all of uh, a podcast as well as uh, streaming other than calling. it. Hello, you're back. <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to bring in Josh here for a second here too, but I was just vamping and talking about why I enjoyed audio plays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while you were here. Uh, so yeah, uh, they're, 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 I, I love the D and D and I call it live play, even though it is not necessarily live play when you're doing an audio, uh, uh, uh version of it. But, um, I just love that there's different categories within that same 
category, you know, uh, of, of streaming and live as well as uh, the audio edited stuff. So that's very, very cool. Um, I think we're done with video there. Uh, can we at least get them in so that they can uh, try to sign off? Hi, Twitch people. We're, we're pausing for one second while we try to get the video back up and audio back up because we don't have uh, either of them here. Uh, in about one minute, we're going to do some lore you should know with Chris Perkins. He's already alluded to the fact that it's going to be the standing statues, walking statues uh, uh, portion. Uh, and then we should be mostly good to go. What's the situation? Hmm. Someone else is using our meeting starting at four. Yeah. All right. Uh, who else could be using our meeting? We have a we we have our meeting. This is our meeting now. Uh, hey, how's it going? Uh, cool. So uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna do here. Uh, I wanted to at least get their their sign off so we can find out more about what they're they're doing. Uh, and this, of course, is edited. This will all be edited, right, Ryan? <laughs> Yeah, no, we're still we're still here. Oh, we're on Twitch. Ah, yeah. Woo, we're really doing it, guys. We're really doing it live. You get to see it all happening. I can't even look at chat because our Wi-Fi has been down, so maybe that's what there's something to do with this. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess we'll close it off there. Is there anything else we could try? Hmm. All right. Well, we are uh, uh, in a conundrum right about now. Uh, so let's take a quick break, uh, and uh, we will be back uh, with another half hour of Lore You Should Know uh, with Mr. Chris Perkins. We'll at least be able to do that uh, and, uh, and finish this out. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be back in just about two minutes. Bye.